The Italian Mafia and the Italian-American Mafia are cut from the same cloth, which is the island of Sicily from the mid-19th century. The same Sicilians who ruled Italia also emigrated to start a new branch of criminals lurking the streets. But the Italian Mafia was born to overthrow foreign rule, while the American Mafia was born to extort during the Prohibition era. In this video, we're going to compare the Italian Mafia and the American Mafia to see how they are doing today. Since the two mafias have similar beginnings, they also have a similar structure. Every mafia starts with the boss, a head of a family who gets a cut of every operation. Names like Don Vito Corleone, Al Capone, and Vicenzo Terranova come to mind when you think of a boss, but sometimes they have their hands full. That's when the second in command, the underboss, comes in, who usually operates day-to-day -day responsibilities. His cut comes from the boss's cut. Plus, he's next in line to become acting boss if the boss is arrested. The way presidents have advisors, mafia bosses have consilieres, the right-hand man of the boss who also mediates disputes and acts as a representative for the family in meetings with other families. After that, we come to captains and soldiers that are called capos and soldatos. The capos cut their earnings and send to the boss, and are also responsible for fulfilling tasks assigned. In some cases, capos become strong enough to lead the family when the boss dies, the way Anthony Carallo did in the Lucchesi crime family. Finally, you have associates, who technically aren't members of the Mafia, but still work for them as errand boys. This is till they gain the trust of the family. Speaking of family, an important difference between associate and a soldato, soldier, is that soldiers are required to be of Italian descent, or at least half Italian on their father's side. So what's the difference? The first difference between the two mafias is that there are six main Italian mafia families and five American mafia families. Let's start with the Italians. The three oldest and strongest Italian families are the Cosa Nostra of Sicily, Camorra of Campania, and the Nedrangheta of Calabria. Then there are three that are significantly active in the 20th century, Stetta of Sicily, Sacra Corona Unita, and Societa Fulgiana both from Apulia. There are also other families like the Banda della Magliana of Rome, the Mala del Branta of Veneto, and the Toretello crew of Milan, but they're now severely weakened by Italian law. Among these many families, the Cosa Nostra is the most powerful out there. They've made their money mostly through protection racketeering, which includes protection from theft or competition. They also have a history of vote buying for the Italian parliament. According to Reuters, Italy's former governor, Salvatore Cofaro, is currently in jail for having aided and abetted members of Cosa Nostra. But if you've seen Italian mafias running and ruling the drug routes, chances are you've watched the Camorra group in action. They specialize in cigarette smuggling, drug trafficking, counterfeiting, and money laundering. Interestingly enough, the Camorra doesn't follow the usual pyramidal structure. It has more of a horizontal structure, where all the capos are heads of the clans, which are over 50 plus within Camorra. Then we have the Italian Mafia that's engaged in loan sharking, prostitution, and extortion on a global scale, the Nedrangheta. Sometimes the Nedrangheta groups and Cosa Nostra groups act as joint ventures in cocaine trafficking enterprises. Now, let's look at this picture. You may think that this is a map showcasing the governors and mayors of America, but this is an FBI chart of American Mafia bosses across the country in 1963. The name La Cosa Nostra, LCN, is derived from the Mafia in Sicily, but it's simply called the American Mafia. To date, there are over 3,000 members spanning these 154 areas, but they're all broken into families that go state by state. For example, in New York, there are five. The Bonanno, Colombo, Gambino, Genovese, and Lucchese families. You may think that with this many families in New York, there'd be instances of gang wars happening daily. But that's exactly why the Five Families, or the Commission, was formed. We'll talk more about this in a moment. In Philadelphia, there's the Bruno family, named in honor of the late Don Angelo Bruno. Their most recent boss is Skinny Joey, who's currently serving 12 years. He still has his acting boss, Michael Ancelotti, underboss Steve Mazzoni, and conciliere Joe Lagembi watching the business while he's away. In Chicago, there's The Outfit, whose history goes back to Al Capone and the bootlegging era. 
They've also been a constant force in Las Vegas, where they've accumulated much wealth. Who's more powerful? To really understand the Italian Mafia and the Italian-American Mafia, it's now time to turn the pages of history to see who's brought on more chaos. Let's start with the member of the Italian Corleonesi family, Salvatore Rina, who began what was later labeled as the Great Mafia War. The Corleonesi was led by Luciano Leggio, who was the new Mafia boss after the old one, Michele Navarra, was shot dead. Their primary rivals were Stefano Bondate, Salvatore Inzirillo, and Gaetano Badalamenti, who were bosses of various Palermo Mafia families. Just like the five families, there was a Sicilian Mafia commission where the lead Mafia members settled on disputes and decided on important questions. But unlike the cause of five families, which was to stop gang violence, the commission was bringing the prospects of gang violence closer. When Legio was captured in 1974, Rihanna took over, and the Corleonesi began winning allies. He even got a rival gang expelled from the commission in 1978. Now came the massacre. In 1978, Rihanna arranged for the murders of Giuseppe di Cristina and Giuseppe Calderone, bosses of the Riesi and Catania families, who were allies with Bondate and Inzerio. In 1981, Bondate was machine-gunned to death. And a few weeks later, Inzerio was killed in a hail of bullets. Some of their relatives and associates were subsequently killed or banished, including Inzerio's 15-year-old son. A close ally of the pair, Calagero Pizzuto, was shot dead in a crowded bar in September of the same year. During 1981 and 1983, there were at least 400 mafia killings in Palermo, and as many again across Sicily. He then led a specific campaign of assassination of state figures like police chiefs Emanuele Basile and Boris Giuliano, magistrates Racco Cinici and Cesare Terranova, and politicians Pirsante Mattarella and Pio La Torre. By the end of the 1980s, the Corleonesi family came out victorious by eliminating the competition. According to Salvatore Contorno, the winning and losing clans don't exist because the losers don't exist. They, the Corleonesi, killed them all. Now, we move on to the Italian-American Mafia. Remember how we said that the commission was made to end gang violence? Well, you're about to find out what that gang violence was. This is the Castellamarese War. In the 1920s, the American Mafia operations were controlled by Giuseppe Masseria, whose faction consisted mainly of gangsters from Sicily, Calabria, and Campania. However, a powerful Sicilian Don Vito Ferro decided to seize control by sending Salvatore Maranzano. Both sides started recruiting ruthless members like Joseph Bonanno, Stefano Magadino, Joe Aiello, etc. As the war became more violent, gunmen clashed on the streets of New York City. A few targets that went down were Gaspar Malazzo, president of Detroit's chapter of the Sicilian Union, Gaetano Reina, an ally, Giuseppe Morello, a key Masseria enforcer. After Reina's murder, Masseria appointed Joseph Pinzolo to take over the ice distribution racket, but he was later killed at a Times Square office rented by Lucchesi. To retaliate, Joe Aiello, who was president of the Chicago Union, was murdered. This death infuriated members of Castellamarese, and they started murdering key members of Masseria's gang, Steve Ferrigno and Joseph Catania. Based on their origin story, we can tell that the Italian Mafia and the Italian-American Mafia are somewhat two peas in a pod. They both have origins in Sicily, formed families, and continued a path of extortion and racketeering. But what separates them are the territories and the level of violence. In recent years, we've noticed that the American Mafia has been curbed to quite an extent through years of arrests and sting operations while the Italian Mafia is strong to this day. Who do you think is the stronger of the two? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.